Praise the Lord. We continue looking at the three M's of money. We said the three M's of money are making money, managing money, and multiplying money. We've already talked about making money. We've talked about multiply, uh, managing money. And today we want to talk about multiplying money. Um, Proverbs 21.5 says this. I'm reading in the NIV. It says, the plans of the diligent lead to profit. The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. When I read the KJV, it says the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. Tend only to plenteousness. So the thoughts of the diligent, the efforts of the diligent, <clears throat> and their plans lead to plenteous profits. The money God puts in your hand, through the work of your hands, because you're supposed to labor, we said we gather by labor. As the labor brings in the money and as God makes sure that your, you know, your work is fruitful, you are bringing in good income, you have, oh, he has opened up for you many revenue streams, you have started managing your money well. We talked about managing, we said you are planning your money, you are being frugal, which simply means that you're not wasting money and you're a good steward of the finances God has given you. You're distributing the wealth that God has given you in the right way. You're able to give to those in need. You're able to give to the kingdom of God and the work of the kingdom of God. And you are also able to save and invest, which is where the multiplying comes in. So the thoughts of the, of the, of the diligent lead to plenteousness. They lead to increase. You should be increasing. Every day you should be increasing. The money, the overflow that God gives you. You see, he gives you enough for your needs. And then he gives you overflow. That overflow needs to be managed. And the way to manage that overflow is to put it into savings and investments to make sure that your money is growing all the time. You have to learn how to grow money. So um, in uh, Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30, Jesus tells a parable about a man who is going far away and he gives talents to his servants. The first one gets five talents. The second one gets two talents. The third one gets one talent. The guy who gets five talents multiplies his money, gives it an 100% profit because when he when, when the owner comes back, he says, you gave me five and now I've brought another five. So I have 10. So that was 100% profit. The other one comes and says, you gave me two and I've made two more. Again, 100% profit. And then here comes the guy who thought he was the wise guy. He'd been given one talent which he buried. He decided he's not going in any way to invest that money. He's just going to come and give it back, you know, to the owner, like, please, you're not going to reap where you did not sow, so here's your money back. Well, the Bible calls that guy a wicked guy. He calls him a wicked guy because he did not put the talent to good use. He said to him, even if you are not going to trade with my money and give me more, you know, give me a good income back, even if you are not going to trade with my money, you should have put it in the bank. At least at the bank, I would have come back and gotten my, my, you know, my principal amount plus my interest on top of that. So then by looking at such a parable, we can tell that God actually expects us to do something with the wealth that he gives us. He expects us to multiply it. You know, if God gives you an income of, uh, you, for example, 100,000 shillings every month, you cannot continue to just say, all I have is 100,000. You take it, you eat it, the rest you put under your mattress. doesn't work. You have to invest that money so you can begin to grow, so you can begin to increase. You have to save. Saving is a culture of the kingdom of God. We are not them that use everything prodigiously. You know, we spend wastefully. Every month we are ready, you know, we deplete all our accounts and we wait to see what God will do for us next. No. Not at all. If God has provided for you, there is saving in there for you. You must make sure that you are saving. The same way you must make sure you are giving. The same way you make sure to meet your own needs. All of that is part of the same package. Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, and this is in the NIV, invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight. So he's expecting that you will put your money in different places to multiply it, to increase it. You see, that is why you have to actually be a, a, a student. Be a student of, of investment. Be a student of savings. Be a student 
of you know how to make money grow if you are just sitting there afraid to venture into investments you know you will never grow your money but the reason why most people are afraid to invest to venture into investing is because they don't want to do the research themselves they want to hear say you know so and so said this is a good idea they put their money there they burn their fingers somebody else said oh so and so i've been hearing that this business is really working they put their money there again they burn their fingers they hear of a get rich quick scheme somewhere they run there put their money there and wait for it to double they burn their fingers there as well you know you have to be the person that sits down diligently looks at investments figure it out talk to the people ask questions you know understand the investment understand how your money will grow once you have that understanding you are able now to figure out if it's a good investment or a bad investment the responsibility of checking out an investment is your own stop blaming people that so and so lied to me and i put in my money and i burnt my fingers you should have looked deeper. You should have diligently looked through that investment to ensure that it was a good investment before you put in your money. You see? But God actually expects that you will multiply your money. The thing to always remember is this, that your principal amount is like a parent. It is a parent. That principal amount should bear you more. It should come, bring, have children of its own. Whether that means interest, that you're earning interest wherever your money is, or if it's a business that it is bringing profits. Whatever is birthed out of that principal amount becomes the children of that amount. The children of that amount should also be put to work, which means if wherever it is you're saving, you should be saving in a place where your interest is compounded. Simple interest will not grow as fast as compounded interest. Why? Because in compound interest, even your interest is bearing interest. So your principal is there. Its children are bearing for you. They are also fruitful because they are also being compounded and earning interest day to day. Always think about it. And when you save, don't just save for consumer items. You know, we thank God because we are delivered from this idea of debt that you have to go into debt. To, uh, to get, you know, to buy things. You don't have to go into debt, by the way, to buy land. You don't need to go into debt to buy a house. You don't need to go into debt to buy a car. God is able to provide for you so that you can buy for every, you can buy everything in cash. You don't need to go into debt for everything. However, with that understanding, we should also know that we should be multiplying, increasing our wealth all the time. So invest also or save also to invest. Don't just save to leave your money in the bank, look at it, smile at it, you know, and nothing else. You're just happy to have some money sitting in the account. No. Invest because put your money there to save so that you can put it in an investment where it will begin to produce for you. That is how money is multiplied. So this is a prayer item for you. Ask God, where can I put my money? How can I multiply the money that you have put in my hand? How can I make sure that every cent you bring into my hand that is not for spending, every cent that is for, for saving and investing, that it actually begins to bring forth and to birth for me? You know, the people who are considered rich in the world are people who know how to make money. They know how to manage money. They know how to multiply money. Okay? So as a believer, you have God and he's all-knowing. And he knows where you can put your money for it to increase. You must go back into your secret place, you know, that prayer closet and begin to pray about it. Begin to ask God, lead me, lead me. Let me hear that voice. You know, he promises you will hear a voice that says this is the way. Walk you in it. Tell him, Lord, let me hear that voice telling me this is the way. This is where I should invest my money. This is where I should make this money grow. This is where I should put it for it to multiply. And if you trust God and if you walk with God, you will not have to worry about, you know, getting lied to or falling into a false investment or falling into a get-rich-quick scheme because God will guide you and he will lead you to a legitimate place where your money will grow. You are blessed God keep you this week. We look forward to I look forward to seeing you again next week. We have talked about the three M's of money in the last three weeks. 
I hope you learned something and I hope you are affecting it as well. God bless you.